Do you hear it? It's a curious humming sound that seems to come from inside the object. Here, I'll move the microphone nearer. And now we're not more than 25 feet away. Can you hear it now? Oh, Professor Pearson! Yes, Mr. Phillips? Can you tell us the meaning of that scraping noise inside the thing? Possibly the unequal cooling of its surface. I see. Do you still think it's a meteor, Professor? I don't know what to think. The metal casing is definitely extraterrestrial. Not found on this Earth. Friction with the Earth's atmosphere usually tears holes in a meteorite. This thing is smooth and, as you can see, a smooth Just a minute, something's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is terrific. The end of the thing is beginning to flake off. The top, it's beginning to rotate like a screw. I mean, the thing must be hollow. She's moving! Look, keep the back! Keep, keep back, there. Keep yes. back I yes. tell you! Yes. Keep those idiots back! No, she's off! She's off! Keep it's back, I tell you! Stand back! Keep those it's idiots back! back. Keep, back. keep back, I tell you! Keep back there! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrifying thing I've ever witnessed. W- wait a minute. Someone's crawling out of the hollow top. Someone. Or, or something. I can. I can see peering out of that black hole two luminous discs. Are they eyes? It might be a face. It. it might. <laughs> Good heavens, something's wriggling out of the shadow like a gray snake. Now it's another one, and another. They, they look like tentacles to me. There, I can see the thing's body. It's large, large as a bear, and it glistens like wet leather. The face, and ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it's indescribable. I can hardly force myself to keep looking at it. The eyes are black, green like a serpent. The, the mouth is V-shaped with saliva dripping from its ringless lips that seem to quiver and pulsate. The monster, whatever it is, can hardly move. It seems weighed down by possible gravity. Well, well, it trails up. The crowd falls back. They've seen plenty. This is the most extraordinary experience. I, I can't find words. I'll pull this microphone with me as I talk. I'll have to stop the description until I can take a new position. Well, hold on, will you please? I'll be right back in a minute. We are bringing you an eyewitness account of the strange happenings in Grover's Mill, New Jersey. We now return you to Carl Phillips at Grover's Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here I am back of a stone wall that adjoins Mr. Wilmoth's garden. From here I get a sweep of the whole scene. I'll give you every detail as long as I can talk, as long as I can see. More state police have arrived. They're drawing up a cordon in front of the pit, about 30 of them. No need to push the crowd back now, they're willing to keep their distance. The captain is conferring with someone. We can't quite see who. Oh, yes, I believe it's Professor Pearson. Yeah, yes it is. Now they've parted. The professor moves around one side, studying the object, while the captain and the policemen advance with something in their hands. I can see it now. It's a white handkerchief tied to a pole. A flag of truce. If those creatures know what that means, what anything means. Wait, something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Evidently, there is some difficulty with our field transmission. However, we will return to that point at the earliest opportunity. 
In the meantime, we have a late bulletin from San Diego, California. Professor Indelkoffer, speaking at a dinner of the California Astronomical Society, expressed the opinion that the explosions on Mars are undoubtedly nothing more than severe volcanic disturbances on the surface of the planet. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been informed that we have finally established communication with an eyewitness of the tragedy. Professor Pearson has been located at a farmhouse near Grover's Mill where she has established an emergency observation post. As a scientist, she will give you her explanation of the calamity. The next voice you hear will be that of Professor Pearson. Professor? cylinder at Grover's Mill. I can give you no authoritative information, either as to their nature, their origin, or their purposes here on Earth. Of their destructive instrument, I might venture some conjectural explanation. For want of a better term, I shall refer to the mysterious weapon as a heat ray. It's all too evident that these creatures have scientific knowledge far in advance of our own.